Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Zoo School Learning, uh, Zoo School Live. And um, my name is Elisa, and I'm one of the educators here at the zoo, and we're going to be starting a new theme today. But before we get into that, uh, we would like to let you know that we have a $25 special on our distance learning. So it's kind of like a um, cyber learning that you can uh, check. And um, of course, if you guys want to help the zoo, um, please donate to our emergency fund that you can find on our website um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, please keep watching. Um, so on the description for um, the, our video today, you guys are able to see the activities that you guys can participate in um, relating to our video and the friend that we're going to meet, okay? Um, so our theme for today is sorting species, and that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on this week. So what that means is we're going to see why animals are categorized um, based on similar characteristics and why they're put into those groups. All right, so we're gonna be talking about reptiles today. And reptiles have lots of really interesting characteristics. Um, two bio facts or artifacts that I have before you meet our friend. We have a um, snapping turtle shell and you know it has um, scoots and a bony plate. I also have a snake shed. So right, our reptiles shed their skin in order to get bigger. Um, they also get those old scales off and have nice new pretty ones underneath. So that's just one defining characteristic of reptiles are those scales that are covering their body. So without further ado, we're going to meet our reptile friend for the day. Her name is Tango, and Tango is a, an Argentine black and white tegu. And today we are going to give Tango a bath. So Tango here is a kind of lizard. Um, I also have some toothbrushes that I'm going to just give her kind of a little bit of a spa day while she's chilling. And maybe she'll just let herself out instead, <laughs> which is fine. She can explore on her own. So um, right here on the table is what's called a heat pad. So that works really well into um, defining what a reptile is. So one characteristic of reptiles is that they are cold blooded. So Marissa had talked about this a little bit last week. Um, it does not mean that their blood runs cold. It just means that they need to go into a, an energy source that provides heat in order for them to get warm. Now with all things animal kingdom related, there are exceptions to the rule, right? But, but for the most part, for the most part, all reptiles are cold blooded. What's down there? There's nothing down there. <laughs> um, which means that they really, really like to find a heat source in order to get warm. So that's why this heat pad is here so that she can get nice and cozy and it just has a cover on it so she doesn't burn herself on the actual heat pad. Um, so Tango here, is a lizard. So we have in our uh, group of reptiles, we have examples like lizards, turtles, tortoises, snakes. Those are, you know, crocodiles, alligators. She kind of looks like an alligator, right? Those are all examples of reptiles. They all have these um, scales that cover their body and or bony plates, right? So the way that she feels kind of is like a beaded texture. So quite different from a snake and quite different from a lot of other lizards. So comparing um, the, the feel of tango scales to, for example, Sydney, who you guys met, totally different. They feel um, quite, um, not opposite. It's just that Sydney's scales are very smooth and flat where hers are smooth, but they're bumpy and they're like beaded. So they, they kind of are raised. Um, above her, so they, they give her more of a bumpy kind of texture. Um, another characteristic of reptiles is that they lay eggs, right? So Tango here is a female, she is a girl. That means that she could lay eggs if she had a mate. She does not have a mate. Um, she has not laid eggs before, um, and she will most likely not have any babies. But if she were to live in the wild, 
she could lay up to 35 eggs. Again, exceptions to the rule, there are some reptiles that don't necessarily lay eggs, but she is one of them. She does lay eggs, right? Um, she's sticking out her tongue that you can tell is forked, right? So just like a snake, oh, camera shy, all right. And she uses that tongue just like a snake would. So she's using that tongue and smelling the air or the scent particles in the air um, and bringing that back into her mouth like Marissa told you about that Jacobson's organ that can tell her if that smell is familiar and if she likes it. Um, so she's gonna be sniffing for lots of different kinds of things. She's an omnivore, so that means that she eats both meat and vegetation. Um, in the wild, these guys will eat pretty much anything. So insects, um, small animals, eggs, invertebrates, hi, but also plant material. So here at the zoo, Tango gets a salad. So it's got some uh, leafy greens, fruits and veggies, kind of like what you guys would eat. So, you know, some, some bits of apples um, and maybe some grapes occasionally, cantaloupe, different uh, variety of greens. And she also gets meat. So yes, she does eat mice. She does occasionally get some eggs. She really apparently likes this rock. I'm not sure why. Um, and you can see while she's resting her neck on that rock, these kind of pouches under her chin, right? Those are her jowls. And on the males or the boy tegus, they are much bigger, much bigger. So she's about three feet in length. Um, she weighs about nine pounds. Oh, see, she likes that heat pad, nice and warm. Um, in the wild, these guys can get a little bit bigger. They can get to be about four feet, um, a little over 10 pounds, and um, they can live a decent 20 years. So these guys do make good pets with the understanding that you really, really need to research about your pets before you get them. So there's a problem um, that we're facing in Florida and Georgia. These guys are an invasive species. So what that means is they're not native to that area. They're not usually found in that area, um, but people have been releasing them into the wild, whether that be because they, they can't take care of them anymore, they didn't realize they were gonna get so big. Um, whatever the reason may be, uh, they are found in large numbers in Florida and Georgia where they really shouldn't be. Um, so it'd be best, you know, if you, if you can't take care of that pet anymore to try and locate either a rescue or a rehab, um, or some other type of facility that might take them in instead, right? So back to those jowls, they're very, very strong. Um, they're actually more powerful than a, the, the jaw force of a dwarf caiman. So they're really, really strong and that's what helps them to grip on and to bite, um, larger Prey, right so the biggest thing that she gets is our mice so we don't have to worry about that and she is a rather docile animal so that means she's you know a mild tempered more calm type of, of animal that we have here so even though she looks really big and scary she's really a sweetheart she really really is um, the cool thing about these guys when they're babies uh, they're actually bright green so after either a month or two, they shed that green um, scales and they, they become this, this black and white coloration. Um, there are other species of tegu that are more brown or rusty colored or more yellowish or tan. So these guys are, are really pretty cool with their, their black and white coloration. And uh, unlike skunks that we learned about, right, with Brie, where she has that black and white coloration to stand out, this black and white coloration, it's not as vibrant. It actually helps her really well to camouflage um, in her surroundings. So these guys are a ground dwelling lizard. They like to be on the ground. Um, they're not really gonna climb trees, but they love to swim and they're really, really good swimmers. They use that really muscular tail in order to um, protect themselves, but also to help them swim and keep balance. So we learned with Sydney, right, that sometimes, um, and again, this can only happen once, if, if Sydney were to be a blue tongue skink in the wild and an animal were to grab onto his tail, his tail could grow back. It doesn't look nearly as pretty as the original tail and he can only do that once. Do you guys think that uh, this kind of lizard can regrow her tail? 
No way. Yeah, no, it's way too big and way too important. So you can see this is big, big muscle on the base of her tail and she uses this to protect herself. So if she feels threatened by another animal, she's going to take this meaty muscular tail and whip it back and forth. So she basically slaps her predators in the face. Um, not many things, you know, are gonna wanna eat these guys, but there are, there are bigger prey down in South America where these guys are found. So they're called an Argentine tegu because they are found in Argentina. Paraguay, Uruguay, um, as well as Brazil. So any big creature that lives in the rainforests of South America, so you can imagine things like, you know, jaguars and such, um, or any other type of uh, cat species would take this as a nice hefty meal. Not that we're gonna let that happen to you, Tango. I know, I promise. Um, so Tango here was a donation from the Academy of Natural Sciences. So she uh, has been interacting with people for quite some time, which definitely helped with her more docile nature. So it's good to handle reptiles um, regularly. A lot of people think, you know, well, you don't really need to take care of them um, at home. Um, they are easier, let's say, to take care of than uh, a dog, most usually. Um, dogs need a lot of attention and care, but it's definitely good to handle reptiles on a regular basis at home that helps to diminish um, aggressive behavior, right? Because then they get used to being handled. They, they don't see that as a threatening um, thing. So uh, these guys actually uh, do like to, I'll say this, you know, loosely snuggle in that they like warm places, right? So they'll, it's not, you know, a good thing to just take this animal and snuggle it against your neck because they have some powerful jaws, like I mentioned, right? But in your lap, if you want to hold this, this reptile on your lap, they'll take in that, that warmth that they really, really like, and um, they'll just, they'll just stay in your lap. So um, reptiles, again, let's recap. They're usually covered in scales um, or bony plates or both. Um, usually they lay eggs usually they are cold blooded. So they want <laughs> that nice warm heat to be comfortable. Uh, that also gets them energy in order to move around. So they will bask in the sunlight and what reptiles will do is that if it gets too hot, that's when they find shade. So if you have a reptile at home, maybe some of you guys have things like corn snakes or bearded dragons, you'll see that they'll be going uh, from one spot of their enclosure to the other. So they'll usually be basking under their heat lamp to get nice and warm. Um, it's a good time to feed them afterwards because they have that energy to move around. And then if they get too hot, they're gonna go into the cool spot of their enclosure. And that's what reptiles do in the wild as well. So they'll bask in the sunlight and then if it gets a little too hot, they'll go in the shade. So I think we're going to um, ask some questions now. So our first question is from Reed. Where do tegus come from? Good question, Reed. So tegus come from South, uh, well this tegu in particular comes from South America. So um, Northern countries of South America, um, Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and she's called an Argentine tegu, so also Argentina. Tegan wants to know, does tango get enrichment? What is it? Yes, Tegan, she gets enrichment. So um, she has that tongue just like a snake, so any type of different scents. You remember um, when they had Monty and they did the, the scent test and he really liked that oregano? Um, we'll use scent enrichment uh, in her enclosure and rub it on either a rock or a part of a tube of her enclosure and see what she likes best. Um, she also really, really likes hides. So remember when we talked about boxes with Hoggle? Obviously she needs bigger boxes than what we would give to Hoggle because she's a much bigger animal. Um, but she really likes to hide in things. So we have PVC tubes. Um, we, we like to use plastic hides in her enclosure because she gets misted regularly. So having a paper uh, or cardboard box in there would, wouldn't be very good. Um, so she definitely likes scent enrichment and she loves things that she can hide in. She also loves going outside in the sun, just like I'm sure you guys do, right? Like playing in the sunshine, which I thought it was gonna be today and here in Norristown, it's, it's not too sunny yet. 
Keith and Ava want to know if you have to clip her nails. Really good question, Keith and Ava. So um, for our reptiles, we do have to look at their nails occasionally, but it's not nearly as frequently as, let's say, a rabbit or um, a dog, right? So we give her different textured materials in her enclosure, just like you can see on our table. So this bark, rocks, mulch, dirt, um, grooved pieces of plastic to climb on so that that naturally helps to file down her nails so that we don't have to trim them. All right, our next question, we have Kyle. What's the difference between tango and a bearded dragon? Really good question. So a bearded dragon, um, they are native to Australia. They are um, a hot and dry lizard. Um, they both like to live on the ground, but Tango here likes it hot, just like um, bearded dragons, but she doesn't really like it dry. She likes it wet. So her enclosure gets misted every so often throughout the day because that's the type of climate that these guys are accustomed to. That humid, rain, think of a rainforest, really, really humid, rains a lot, um, like water in the air, muggy, sticky. That's Tango's favorite type of climate. Whereas for bearded dragons, they like it hot as well, but dry. They want it dry and sandy. Olivia wants to know how much does she eat a day? Really good question, Olivia. Um, so similar to the lizards and snakes that you guys have met thus far, I'm sure you can imagine that she does not eat multiple times a day. So her feeding schedule kind of varies throughout the week, um, but she sometimes gets fed a couple days in a row, and if not, a couple days in a row every other day. So she'll either get crickets like today, and then maybe a mouse tomorrow, and then the next day she won't get fed, and then she might get you know, a hard-boiled egg, and then maybe she won't get fed the next day after that, and then she'll get a salad, and then some crickets. So kind of varies, um, but basically either once a day or once every other day. Ina, or Ina, sorry if I mispronounced your name, what is the color of her tongue? Let's see the color of her tongue. I believe it's a pinkish reddish color. Um, just like I told you with some of our other animals, uh, our other reptiles that stick their tongues out, they can vary in color with our snakes. Obviously Sydney, our blue tongue skink, has a blue tongue. So it kind of varies between pink, purple, black, blue. How old can they get? So in the wild, uh, they will most likely live to be maybe 12 to 15. In human care, so at, the, at a zoo, for example, um, hopefully we would like to see her get to be uh, in her 20s. So they can live, you know, a good maybe five to seven years longer in human care. Hi there, you're having fun exploring. Didn't really want that water though, right? That's okay. Okay, Ty from Maryland wants to know how big she can get. Really good question, Ty. So in the wild, uh, these guys get a little bit bigger because they're eating bigger food items and the males do get bigger than the females. What are you doing? I know, that's the ground. Sorry to offend you. <laughs> Um, so she's about three feet in length, um, and she'll probably not get much bigger than that. And she weighs just over nine pounds. In the wild, they'll, they'll get to be uh, over 10 pounds. And our next question, Avery wants to know, does Tango shed her skin? Yes, she does. Look at that. Talk about good timing. So remember reptiles shed their old skin right and that helps them to get that nice new scales underneath uh, and it also helps them to grow bigger if they are young so tango here does shed unlike a snake where they shed in one big shed she will shed in pieces and giving them warm baths helps them to naturally shed um so i have a toothbrush and sometimes depends on the day and her mood sometimes she likes to be scrubbed, so she's getting a spa day. She likes in between her, her folds. <laughs> Did it feel nice, Tango? Yeah, oh, she's closing the eye that's closest to me. <laughs> All right, Lucas and Grayson want to know if she is nocturnal. 
That's a really good question. Um, and you know what? I'm not sure, so I'm actually gonna ask um, our uh, friends over here. I'm pretty sure that she is actually diurnal and um, somewhat crepuscular. Yes, so she is more active in the daytime and, <clears throat> excuse me, during dusk and dawn. So when the sun comes up and when the sun goes down. Um, but she's not strictly nocturnal, no. You'll actually see these guys uh, <laughs> in the wild in the daytime. Like I said, these guys are good swimmers. Uh, Griffin, six years old, wants to know, is her bite venomous? So to my knowledge, um, her bite is not venomous, um, but she does have that really, really strong jaw bite, right? So just because it's not venomous doesn't mean that, bless you, doesn't mean that it can't do some damage. Um, so she does have very, very sharp teeth that help her to grab onto pieces of lettuce and rip them apart, but also to rip apart smell animals, right? So just because she's not venomous doesn't mean that she uh, isn't dangerous. Just because she, um, you know, anything that we, that we say our rule is anything that with a mouth uh, has the potential of biting. Has she bitten anybody here? No, she hasn't, but she can. Elijah wants to know what color Tango's eyes are. Let's see if our camera woman can get a little bit closer and see what color her eyes are. They are brown, it looks like. Tyler and Owen want to know if she has good eyesight. She does have decent eyesight, but compared to, let's say, one of our friends that we met last week, Killian the Hawk, his eyesight is far superior than hers. Her best sense is probably her sense of smell with that tongue, right? Mia wants to know if they hibernate. Mia, what a fabulous question. Yes, they do. So they go a little bit more dormant in the winter time, right? A lot of reptiles do, um, and they do this because they don't like that cold weather, right? They, they need that sunlight in order to have enough energy to move around and to hunt for food. The other thing that they'll do, which is really cute in the wild, they will snuggle together with each other in order to stay nice and toasty warm during those cold months. Can you have one as a pet? And where do you buy one? Yes, you can have one as a pet. Where do you buy one? That's a really good question. Um, they're, they're not an, uh, a frequent type of pet that you would find in a, a regular pet store, right? But there are some reptile shows that we have. Um, you wanna make sure that they're, you know, a reputable uh, reptile show. Um, and, oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Well, everything pees and everything poops, so there you go. Can you come out of that dirty water now, Tango? No. So sometimes you can um, purchase one of these guys at a, a reputable uh, reptile show. All right, guys, um, I think that was the last question that we have for now. We will try our best to answer some of your questions online in just a little bit. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and we hope that you will stay with us this week and keep watching for our sorting species theme so you don't have to wait and see what type of animal we have uh, to show you guys tomorrow. All right, thank you from Elwood Park Zoo, um, and we hope to see you guys tomorrow, okay?